So in the last session, uh, we saw uh, how the data uh, about placement is available. So uh, we had four variables, uh, the academic performance during uh, MBA program, academic performance during UG program, uh, the industry experience of a student and the extracurricular, co-curricular uh, activities ratings. Everything was rating on a scale of 10, right? So uh, uh, essentially, we had reduced the problem to uh, predicting the value of y using x1, x2, x3 and x4. So uh, uh, is this regression then? Uh, are we talking about a regression problem? If this were a regression problem, uh, we would have written the expression. Uh, we would have written the expression in a particular way. But essentially, we are asking, can these attributes be used to predict whether the student will pick up a job during the placement process? So essentially, are these attributes in any way related to y, right? Uh, so uh, the answer is it is a regression problem. Unfortunately, it is not a straightforward regression problem. It is what is called as a logistic regression problem. Why is it logistic regression problem? Because our uh, response variable is a categorical variable. Our response variable is a yes, no question. Our response variable doesn't take continuous values. Okay. Uh, so, uh, therefore, this problem cannot be solved using regular regression method. So, uh, yeah, so if we pay attention to our response variable, uh, our response variable is binary, right? Uh, uh, and therefore, we cannot use our regular regression methods, nor can we use the regular regression expression, right? If we had used, if we had used the regular regression method, if uh, this was a multiple linear regression problem, now, what is a multiple linear regression problem? Refer to the previous sessions where we have described uh, 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 the multiple linear regression problem and I, we had taken an example. If I remember correctly, that example was also from a B school where we had looked at predicting the academic performance of the student. Now we are going one step ahead. We are saying the academic performance of the student is available. Now we want to predict the probability that the student will actually get placed. Well, we are not trying to predict the probability. We are actually trying to directly predict whether the student will get placed, one or zero. So if we had used multiple linear regression model, we would have written the expression this way, right? Uh, so the, you already know this expression by now. So y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 plus beta 4 x4 plus that error term epsilon. Uh, where we know that uh, beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, beta 4 are the regression coefficients which need to be estimated uh, for the uh, regression model to be a uh, good model. And we know what are what do we mean by regression model to be a good model. However, as I said, uh, our response variable uh, is binary uh, and therefore uh, uh, most many of the assumptions of the regression model won't hold and we will not get good predictions if we decide to go with multiple linear regression. Therefore, we are not going to use MLR uh, for this example. So what are we going to do? We are going to go logistic regression way. So what is this logistic regression? Let us uh, proceed towards it in a step by step fashion. So uh, since uh, we cannot use directly y because y is binary and it may violate uh, some of the assumptions of MLR, can we use probabilities? Now uh, we are then we are converting this uh, response variable. We are not saying uh, y is equal to 1 or 0. Now we are saying probability of y is equal to 1. What is the probability that the student will get placed? So essentially we will ask ourselves what is probability of y is equal to 1. Now if we do that, we are essentially converting the response variable. Uh, now our response variable can take any value from 0 to 1, right? Because probabilities can only be between 0 and 1, right? So uh, let, us, let us use probability of y is equal to 1 as our predictor, right? Uh, so now we are moving away from only 0, 1 values to any value between 0 and 1, right? Turns out that even that is not a very uh, uh, right way to go ahead. But if we use odds, right? Uh, if we use odds instead of probabilities, then we can even get out of this limit of 0 and 1. Right now, if we use probabilities as our predictor, we are still limited, right? What are our limits? Our limits are only between any value between 0 and 1. If we want to get out of this, then uh, we can use odds and odds are defined as ratio of probabilities. So uh, what are, how, how do we define odds? Odds of uh, uh, success is the ratio of probability of y is equal to 1 divided by the probability of y equal to 0, right? 
So what is it? Ratio of probability y is equal to 1 to probability of y is equal to 0. So this is called odds or odds ratio. Okay, odds. They are called odds. Once again, uh, let, let the definition be very clear. Now, uh, from, the, from the definition of odds, it is very clear that odds are not limited to a value between 0 and 1. Now, if, uh, if we say that uh, uh, this probability is 90%, uh, then obviously the probability of y is equal to 0 is 0.1, right? Because uh, probability of y is equal to 0 is 1 minus probability of y is equal to 1. So uh, if we go that way, then obviously the odds are 9, 9 is to 1, right? We call it 9, 9 is to 1 odds. Now, if this were 0.99, this will be 0 0.01, right? And the odds will be 99 is to 1, right? So uh, we have essentially removed the condition uh, that uh, uh, would have been imposed if we had used probabilities as our predictor. What are we going to do is we are going to use odds as our predictor. So how does the equation transform? How does the regression equation transform if we use odds as our response variable? So uh, generally we don't use odds, we actually use log of odds. Right, uh, so that uh, we get values in the negative side also. So uh, let, let us drop the error term for now. Uh, this error term, this error term, let us not worry about it. Uh, let us not be statistically precise. Let us understand the concept uh, of logistic regression. Uh, so I am going to drop uh, the error term, but uh, that is not a, a statistical mistake. We are dropping it for convenience. So as we said earlier, uh, now we are going to say that our response variable is not plain vanilla y. Our response variable is not even probability of y is equal to 1 because we saw the limitations. Limitations are we will only get values between 0 and 1. Now if we use odds, odds are also kind of uh, uh, limited because they will get values only on the positive side. So let us take log of odds. Log of odds will give us values even on the other side. So this is, this is the expression that we are going to use for our logistic regression. So this is the final expression that we are going to use. Okay. How does that transform then? Let us, let us make this transformation quickly so that we understand the probabilities also from this equation. So let us take, uh, 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 let us take uh, the anti-log on both sides, right? Uh, so uh, uh, odds will be equal to e to the power of uh, beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 and so on. Uh, remember, uh, we have to be careful about uh, this uh, here. I am assuming that the log is to the base of E, right? Log is to the base of E. Now, if log has a different base, uh, obviously this will change. This will change. Uh, let us not get into the uh, mathematics of uh, the base of log, but be careful about what base you are going to use and uh, because it dictates the logit regression expression. So if we use log of odds as our response variable, the odds will be given by e to the power of beta naught plus beta 1 x1 and we know what are odds. Odds are probabilities and therefore you can get the expression for probabilities. So you can actually uh, ensure, you can verify that probability of y is equal to 1, probability that the student will get placed will be given by this expression which is at the bottom of your screen. Okay, so let me repeat that. Okay. So, we have a whole bunch of x variables and y variables, right? We have we a have whole bunch of x variables and y variables. We said since we have four x variables and one y variables, is it a question of regression? And then we said since our response variable is binary, we are going to use what is called as logistic regression and not our regular MLR. If this were MLR, we would have written the expression this way. Right. But uh, it may violate some of the assumptions of the MLR uh, because your response variable can only take two values. Therefore, we saw whether we can use probabilities. We, we realized that the probabilities are limited only between 0 and 1. So we thought, let me take odds. Now, odds are defined as ratio of probabilities. Right. Odds are defined as ratio of probabilities. We said even odds uh, uh, looks a uh, little odd. Right. Uh, and therefore, the general practice is to use log of odds. And that is what the common practice is in the logit regression. So we said the response variable will be log of odds, log of odds, right? And from there we calculate, we uh, we wrote the expression for the probability. And finally, we got the probability of 
y is equal to 1 to be this expression to be this expression okay make sure that you have digested all this mathematics we are going to show all this uh, in an excel sheet so uh, uh, in in this session uh, uh, when, when i am discussing logit regression with you we are going to use excel whereas when we run the tutorial uh, we are obviously going to move away from uh, excel that that has always been our practice and uh, we will use uh, uh, python to show you the logistic regression for the same example right but right now we are going to run this example in excel uh, choice of excel is little odd uh, because ideally speaking uh, excel doesn't handle logistic logistic regression very well so as you are going to see later we are going to calculate a lot of things manually doesn't matter uh, i like calculating things manually because it helps us explain all these steps that we are currently showing on the slide uh, very methodological uh, very chronologically in an excel sheet right okay so uh, what do we run uh, what do we run the regression for we run the regression to essentially estimate the regression coefficients which are the betas we are still interested in finding these betas these are the betas that we are interested in beta naught beta 1 beta 2 right which are av available in the numerator as well as the denominator so the objective of the regression still doesn't change even if it was mlr uh, we were interested in estimating the values of beta naught beta 1 beta 2 even in logistic regression we are interested in the uh, estimation of beta naught beta 1 beta 2 here the objective is different in mlr the objective was uh, minimization of the squared errors if you recall in the logistic regression uh, the objective uh, is maximization of log likelihood okay log likelihood uh, what is log likelihood uh, it is the log of probability of correct predictions now be very clear it is not the probability of y is equal to 1 it is not the probability of y is equal to 1 it is the probability that this model will correctly predict whether the student will get placed or not okay so it is slightly different and we are trying to maximize the log of this probability okay log of this probability so that is going to be the objective function that we are going to use once again uh, highlighting the difference between mlr and logistic regression in mlr the objective uh, of running the regression and calculating the parameters or estimating the parameters is to reduce the sum of squared errors in logistic regression the objective uh, of running the regression and estimating the values of regression coefficient is maximization of log likelihood which is the log of probability of correct predictions okay let us see the excel sheet as i said uh, let us see the excel sheet and i zoomed it up yes okay now uh, this is what our data was and now let us go to the logistic regression part of this let us jump to the data first i have already solved logistic regression so you will see all kinds of numbers here so this is the data this is the plain data that we had in the previous slide also right this is plain data so what is the first thing to be seen the first thing to be seen are the correlation coefficients correlation coefficients so uh, which is going to be a matrix and uh, uh, these values are blank uh, because uh, uh, it's a symmetric property correlation is a symmetric property so the correlation between uh, experience and MBA CGPA is fairly weak, negative 0 0.03. Uh, correlation between uh, UG CGPA and MB CGPA is quite strong and we have seen it, it is generally strong. But what we are interested in are the correlation coefficients here because these are the correlation coefficients of response variable with the explanatory variables. So MBA CGPA is correlated with placement uh, y is equal to 1 or 0 uh, and the correlation coefficient is 0.6 almost experience and placement uh, is uh, 0.16 uh, ug cgpa and placement is 0.42 and extracurricular and uh, day zero placement is uh, 0.35 so not not so trivial association uh, amongst the explanatory variable and the response variable and ideally we want these numbers to be small except for this one number uh, except for this one number the explanatory variables don't seem to be associated that strongly with each other for example this is ne negative 0 0.07 right uh, 
So uh, ideally, that's what we want. But I, I will look at these numbers and say, yeah, we, we are we are all right. We can run this and see what what happens. Anyway, uh, right now uh, the idea is to show you the logistic regression. Uh, and as I said, this is synthetically generated data. So the the first thing, the first thing that we do, right? The first thing that we do is to code the expression. Okay, what is the expression that we are trying to code? This is the expression that we are trying to code, right? Log of odds. Okay, log of odds. Beta naught plus beta one x one plus beta two x two plus beta three x three plus beta four x four. So this is that expression. Where are my betas? This is where I have put my beta. Beta naught, beta one, beta two, beta three, beta four. Okay. So I will I will write my expression here, which is beta naught. Which is a two, and then beta one x one, beta two x two, beta three x three, beta four x four. Right? These are the values of x one, x two, x three, x three, and x four for student number one. Okay. So this is my this is my expression. This is my expression. This expression. Right? This expression. I have written this expression in Excel. Then what what did I say? I said calculate the odds. How do I calculate the odds? E to the power of this. Right? E to the power of this. So let us let us do that. So next thing we are going to do is calculate the odds. What are odds? Odds are e to the power of this. Okay, x uh, exp is the function in Excel, right? Uh, e to the power of this. Nothing different. Nothing new. E to the power of the right hand side. Okay, and from there I will calculate the probability. How do I calculate the probability? I calculate the probability that y is equal to one. It comes in here, right? How do I calculate this probability? So it is this uh, exponential divided by one plus exponential, right? And we know that is correct because it is this expression. It is the exponential divided by one plus exponential, right? So this is the probability of day one job, okay? Or day sorry, day zero job. This is the probability of day zero job. This comes from the model, okay? This comes from the model. Note that this is the observed value. This is whether the student got placed or not. This is my model predicting whether the student will get the job or not, right? So, what is the probability that I am actually correct? What is the probability? My model predicted that the probability of day zero job is ninety-seven percent. The student actually got placed. So, what is the probability that I am right? I am right with ninety-seven percent probability. Here, I predicted that the student will get a job, and the probability is ninety-one percent. Student actually got a job. So, the probability that I am right, probability that My estimate is correct. Is ninety one percent. Look at this. Look at this, or look at this. Here, I predicted that the probability that the student will get a job, uh, the probability that the student will get a job, is only zero point zero zero four. Okay, zero point zero zero four, and the student actually didn't get a job. So, what is the probability that I'm actually right? I'm 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 right with the probability ninety nine percent because. I I anyway predicted a very low probability that the student will get a job, and the student actually didn't get a job. So the probability that I'm right is fairly large. Okay, the probability that I'm right is fairly large. That is how I calculate the probability of correct estimate. Okay, this is what I said. This probability tells me the probability of y is equal to one. This point nine seven five one is the probability that y is equal to one. This probability point nine seven five one is the probability that the model predictions are correct. Okay, model is predicting correctly. Now let us take a log of that and sum of the log, sum of the log, which is the summation of the log, and then we will use this as our objective function. Where did we say this? We said that here. We said that objective is to maximize the log likelihood. Okay, log of the probability of log of the probability that the model predictions are correct. Okay, so this is that log likelihood. This is the summation of all the log likelihood. Okay, and using this, right? I ran the uh, I ran the optimization problem, saying that this is what I wish to maximize. What can I change? What can I change? What is this whole problem about? This problem is about predicting or estimating the betas. Estimating the betas. So I told Excel try to get a maximum possible value of the log likelihood, sum of log likelihood, by changing what? By changing 
beta not beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 beta 4 so these are my estimated values of beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 beta 4 okay that achieves the objective